must have heard about the $2.25 million that the Clooney Foundation recently donated to seven public schools in Lebanon to aid the Syrian refugee crisis. What I want to know is the Education Ministry's role in assisting specifically the Lebanese youth. So, I'm meeting Marwan Hamedeh, who has presided over eight ministries in his career and remains, to this day, one of, if not the most, omnipresent politicians in Lebanese history. The Lebanese youth, when you, when you talk to them today, when you go out and you meet the youth, you meet these children, uh, what are the questions you mostly get? What do you see in them in today's? They receive very good education, especially compared to the rest of the Arab world. But yet, we are starting to uh, lose space uh, on uh, numerical education, on uh, everything that would drive our education system into the 21st century. Imagine that since 1997, we haven't had a change of programs. So we have not updated our programs. And now I've started a huge site of work uh, in our research and development programs for education with the assistance of the World Bank. We have something like $200 million that are for which level? School, primary and secondary schools. And you know, these are the levels who are the main, uh, I would say, uh, basis for the future. The, the future. Yes. And once you reach universities, there are a lot of universities in Lebanon. Some are of very high quality, some are not that... Uh, less of Yeah, right. much less. less. But in general, we are starting to follow up, to cope with the challenges of the century. What we want to do now is, one, to give more job opportunities and therefore to choose in the program the future path of this youth. Because these people, if they study only Arab literature and uh, get to the, uh, to the market and find no job for them, it is a tragedy. So most attention I have to give is now to vocation because we need more technical skills. We are a big exporter of skills to the world. What we need is to develop, continue to develop this kind of skills, but go into more sophisticated skills, skills that create jobs, uh, that creates... Uh, so, you're of, so with the World Bank, you're reformatting the programs in order to encourage the youth Modernize, to, modernize, modernize as for, much as you can. And to prepare them and for diversify. the skills that are needed for the century. And yes. the next one you're yes. saying. You've been present since the early 80s. I think one of the biggest events and incidents was that you also survived an assassination attempt on October 1st, 2004. It is considered to be the incident that was the first of the series of assassinations that has left your colleagues, your nephew, and uh, many others dead. So after 13 years now, and having been through all this, what is your take on it all? We have to go on fighting, not only for the survival of Lebanon. Lebanon has certain specificities that had made it survive all throughout history under different names, different configurations. But these people are resilient people. Our people are resilient people. But we are doomed. This is uh, not, it's not only because of the political uh, crisis. We've been net exporters of citizens and of skills and brains. A little bit like Ireland towards over the Atlantic, across the Atlantic, like Italy, like other people who uh, are Portugal towards Northern Europe, and now all of Africa and Northern Africa. But in fact, what we try to, to keep on is the link between these youth exported in brackets to the foreign world and the mother country. 
Those who go to the Gulf, go in the Arab world, always come back here. For the good times, they don't really come back here to live and have families no, and, no, and they, grow. They come here, they build a house here or they buy a house here, and they're not final and definite emigrants. But now, if you keep this country afloat, if you bring back all its sense of uh, humanity, liberalism, constitutional uh, regu regulations, freedom of speech and expression, our youth are attached to this. And so they go to Dubai, they go to... Uh, they always come back. They always come back. And they always send money back. And without their money back, we are bankrupt. I'm very frank with you the money coming back from Lebanese abroad represent 30% of our national income. So imagine, it's more important than the gas and oil we are dreaming of, which is at the depth of the Mediterranean Sea, along our sea line, our sea coast. You said that after the TAC agreement, we went from hope to disappointment to complete despair. So it's a downward slope. And you've witnessed so many downward slopes in terms of the political life of this country. Looking into the future, we have to try to be positive, and I'm sure you do that as Minister of Education. But where are we going? Well, I'll tell you, we always have to go back to what our motto is this is a convivial country where religions cultures meet i am at the crossroad of these cultures i am of western culture but very very strong arab uh, roots and belonging feelings and i think this country should be what it has been what it should become again Will it become an independent again? country, a democratic country, uh, an Arab uh, country in the means that it belongs to a community and over all things it should be a country part of this world, a country open to the world. It cannot become an integrist country belonging to any of these foolish ideas. But do you ideas. think the politicians today that a lot of young people criticize for being outdated, uh, part of the same old generation, same old politics. Do they have that in mind? Do they have that as a whole? Well, you know, you have many categories of politicians. Not a uh, lot of young ones. No, not a lot of, uh, of young lot ones. Of... They've started expressing themselves mm -hmm. and they're going to take over. But who's going to take over? Is it Hezbollah? Is it the Sunni integrists? Is it uh, the, the Christians isolationist people? None of these represent the Lebanese future or the Lebanese youth. It is confidence in the future, smile, Lebanon open to the world, to its uh, brothers in the Arab world, to the world. After all, we are on the Mediterranean, we have all, always been we even pretend that we have discovered America, that the Phoenicians were the first to have discovered America. We should keep discovering the world to our youth. You know, you get up every morning, you come to work here, and you realize this is, this is what you work for. Is there a ministry you preferred? Health and education, the most challenging ministries. Health and education was the most challenging one? Health and now education. Those were the most challenging. Health, health was a big challenge. After the civil war, I was for seven years Minister of Health. We had to rebuild the whole health system. We had nothing. We could not vaccinate. And this one is also challenging because of the influx, probably. 500,000 children added to our children. Imagine the birth. Do you ever think about what you want your legacy to be? When people mention Marwan Hamidi, well, that he did his best mm -hmm. uh, during very hard times. Yes. Hard times, better times. The better times. War and peace. 
2000s. War and Peace. Yeah, in the 80s. I was uh, present, I was minister during the Israeli invasion. I was minister for years during the Syrian occupation. I was minister after the uh, uh, the Cedars Revolution, mm -hmm. which I almost paid by my life. And I'm again here to see how to get out of this. Consider yourself a fighter and a survivor. Yeah. And you probably think there's a reason I'm still here. You know, when you see them, especially you on a personal is level, it, you've seen them go. I mean, is Jabran, it, 20. Is it good luck? I don't know. No, but there's a reason. Sometimes, sometimes I have a complex because I think, why should I survive? When they all died? Why all my colleagues, my friends have been decimated and I'm still there. Has it helped you want to fight more yes. because can, yes. they didn't die? I'm still the most determined. Yeah. In the government, I'm always the most vocal. Most determined and most vocal, he says. Most determined to put Lebanon first and vocal about pushing the youth to the forefront. It was both inspiring and moving to hear him talk. One thing I do agree with, the future is ours. Let's make it count.